So I think it went a long way. One, it got me familiar with the organization for a long time because I've followed David for a long time, ever since he was drafted by the Mets and uh, and and got came to the big league. So I, I feel like I was familiar with the organization, familiar with the team, and then the last couple off seasons he wasn't recruiting me by any means, but he would you know we would talk and, and share stories and things of that nature. And then once the season ended this year, he was the first phone call I got saying hopefully we can work something out, hopefully the team can make a deal, and, uh, you know, that went a long way as well. So you're coming off a season, you only played 49 games a year ago, you had, you had shoulder, you had hamstring issues. Where, where are you? Are there any lingering effects along those lines? No, not at all, and that's the thing with the injuries that I had. They were specific injuries. They weren't chronic, reoccurring. It's not like I had muscle injuries. I, I ended up tweaking a, a ligament that connects the hamstring to the calf, and then I obviously broke my shoulder, which... Our trainers and doctors who talked to other doctors around the Major League Baseball said they'd had never seen that in 30-plus years of, of being in the industry. So it was freak freak injury, and that ended up sidelining me for eight weeks. I didn't really do much rehab because I wanted to get back out on the field, which ultimately led to my legs not being ready to get back out on the field and led to the other injury. So it was specific injuries. It wasn't something that reoccurred and kept me out. So you're going to play some first base, especially against left-handed pitchers. What about your comfort level at first? Ever since Justin Morneau started having concussion issues in Minnesota, I was accustomed to playing over there, was able to get a handful of games in Colorado with Todd Helton needing days off and things of that nature. And then last year as well, when Justin would go on the DI, I played a handful of games too. So my comfort level at first base is great. But Lucas Duda is somebody that we're going to need and count on to succeed and, and to go out and have a very productive year as he did last year. So hopefully my, na my days at first base are limited because of the production that he's putting out on the field. What about the changes, making dimensional changes to City Field? What are your thoughts and how it might affect you? I mean, as an outfielder, anytime you're bringing a fence in, it makes it, it, makes it better because it means there's less ground to cover. And, you know, it's great that we have the all-world center fielder and Lagares to be able to cover some ground as well. So, you know, I think it's only going to be able to help us. I think it's going to benefit us. We've got a great pitching staff who's going to be able to keep the balls in the yard, and uh, we're going to be able to take advantage of it. I'm more of a, a, the mental side of it. I always say that I don't want my swing to be mechanical. I want my swing to be versatile. So I, I don't, I don't tink, tinker with my mechanics very often. I'm not a, a very, I'm not a guy who's going to study my swing on video. I study more of what the opponent's trying to do to me, and I counteract that. Mm -hmm. I try and study the catchers. I try and study the pitchers and things of that nature because ultimately they're the ones that are in control. It's not me. I have to react to what they're trying to do. Uh, that having been said, describe yourself as a hitter. Well, I'm, I'm somebody who uh, I'm, I'm aggressive. Um, if I see a strike, I, I tend to get after it and swing. swing. Uh, I like using the whole field, and I think that's what ultimately is allowed to my most recent success is I got back to using the whole field. I got back to using right center. I got back to using the gaps, and I was able to find a lot of real estate in the outfield with, with that approach, and I feel like I've been able to hone that approach and hone the mentality, and that mentality can play in any ballpark. Mets have a new hitting coach in Kevin Long. Are, are you familiar with Kevin, and, and what about the relationship there? Well, I'm familiar with those Yankees beating us in Minnesota <laughs> quite a bit <laughs> and putting a lot of runs on the board so uh, you know that's one thing that I am I am um, experienced in is seeing that so no I'm excited everything that I've heard from about him um, heard from him is is good and positive and that's what you need as a, in a hitting coach as somebody who you know no matter what good or bad somebody is going to be in your corner and that's I think the definition of what a hitting coach should be I think anytime anybody comes from or plays for the Rockies and plays at Coors Field you always hear about okay how are they going to translate out of Coors Field, and, and you've hit over the course of your days in Colorado about 50 points higher than the rest of your career. So you hear that. Mm -hmm. What? How do you respond to it? Well, again, and, and for me, it was my approach was able to be honed because of Coors Field. And in 2013, when I won the batting championship, you know, I don't think I'd ever hit over 270 on the road. I hit 320 on the road that season. So. Like I said, that approach that I was able to hone and, and, and bear down with is something that plays in any ballpark. You've never won a ring. Why do you believe this is the place to come to win that ring? It begins and ends with pitching. If you've got power pitching, you've got a chance. As we saw this year with Madison Bumgarner and, and Kansas City with their bullpen and things of that nature, if you've got pitching, if you've got power arms, that's what ultimately wins the World Series. And, uh, you know, we just got to get into the tournament, and after you do that... Sky's the limit.